Hi, I'm Marty Johnson from 3D Systems. I'm here to introduce to you some figure four training modules that we've put together so that you can be successful in your figure four printing. We had a great time putting these modules together. We've got a lot of great information, information that we really wanna pass on to make you successful as fast as possible. Good morning and good afternoon everyone and this is a uh, continuation in figure 4 training to module 4. This is an intermediate toolbox and part setup for 3D Sprint. One of the things we're focusing on here today is the software and how to set your part up and how we created the print process to get you the best parts out of your uh, figure 4 printer. For our figure four training modules, this is module four, basic training for the intermediate toolbox and part setup for 3D Sprint. The objective of module four is to provide an intermediate understanding of 3D Sprint toolbox and detailed applications of how to use those tools which would lead to printing parts with the desired part intent or application. The goals of this training are to understand the tools and the icons on the ribbon of 3D Sprint, to understand the different smart support options, the manual edits and commonly used parameters in those options that you have. And then to understand the build style options and advanced options you have there as well. And so let's jump straight to the demo. And we're gonna do a lot more hands-on in this demo today. I will point out again, um, if you have any questions, there's always the help that's available. If you click on the top right, uh, help icon, this takes you to a place that you have a lot of help for a lot of the things we're going to discuss today. Um, you, when you go in, there's videos and there's some other feedback, uh, what you can learn about the terms and things like that. So always want to point that out. So we're going to go through the workflow and, and see how to use these intermediate tools. And, and to do that, we're going to just go in and import an STL file and take a look at this. This is the same file we used in module three, but we want to go in and talk about this part from the part intent standpoint and then how to set this up for the most successful print. And to look at this part, there's a couple of things here. You can see that there's a mounting surface here. That's a datum surface. So we want to be sure that this is flat. We know that, that there's also through holes that come through the top that mount that to another surface. In addition, in addition on this part, there's three different large holes that different tubes come in as a junction box. And then in the top, we have an area that has features. So this is where we need to have a higher accuracy and be sure that um, the, the sensors can fit into this section very well. So to get started, let's go over and click on our view. And we're gonna turn on the down facing surfaces. They're set at an angle of 45 and let's make that 10. And when we do that, you'll see our down facing surfaces will turn out red and then and they'll taper off in your color scale as you see them get smaller than that. So this is obviously not the way that we want to print this part based on the intent because we want this to be flat. We want to be able to, to handle the best orientation to be able to handle those different intentions that we talked about before. So let's go to our transform button and we'll leave the view, but the view window open. And so to start with this, I'm gonna focus on the larger cross-sectional area first. So let's get this set up where we can get away from any large cross-section areas. And this sits us pretty good. If you look in, you don't have any red. We still have a little bit of yellow. I'd like to get rid of some more of that. So let's look at, see if we can do this with a compound angle. And one of the places we see is that this could be self-supporting in this box. I'm gonna turn on the sharp edges where you can see that a little better. And so let's take and rotate our part over a little bit so that we've got these self-supporting edges that are coming up. We've got our feature at the top and we should have a pretty good cross-sectional area on this part. And let's move it over to the center of our build area. Now, one thing that we wanna to do to check that so we're going to go back over here to our platform. We're going to click on the clipping in Z. And as we talked about in module three, we're really looking for 
do we have uniform wall thickness, similar to, to the concept you would have in the injection mold printing for good flow of material? And when I say uniform wall thickness, we're looking at this area in the red that you see that's the inner side, inner walls of the part. So if I go up through here, I want to see mostly real similar. When we get right in here, we've got a little bit of a flat area, but I think we can print that pretty well um, with what we've got here. So we'll go up and set this up and say, okay, I think this is a pretty good orientation. One thing I will point out is you'll notice in Z, this may not be the men that you want to start at. Our minimum starting position here is at three millimeters. And when you do a lot of rotating like that, it's going to move it. In fact, this could end up being uh, 10, 12, 20 millimeters. You want to be sure and check that before you finished. And we'll go ahead and set that back to three and be sure that we're at our minimum starting position. We'll see that again as well in the build style. And then let's go look and see what we can do with this part. And so one of the things I'm gonna do is let's just go up and save this. We're gonna save this as a 3D print file. And so we're just gonna call it uh, cover, cover sample, and we'll save that in our file and it will save our orientation for us. So we can do, we're gonna do some more things to this before we bring it back out. So if I go back to my transform, let's scale this down to about, let's scale it back to about 35%. And I had that set for uniform scaling, by the way. You can unclick uniform scaling and set this at, you know, you could just change your X and not the rest of them. But if I have uniform scaling, it will scale everything to the value that I put in here. I'm gonna roll that back. So now I'm gonna take this part Let's move it. I gotta turn off my clipping plane. And let's move it down here at the bottom. Now you can see where I scaled that. This is a big area, and there's no need to build supports that tall. So let's be sure that we've got that set correctly. And we'll set that down at the three millimeter mark again. So what I want to do is show you how to make copies and a good way to set this up for your copies. So we've used the transform to go in and make this smaller. Let's go up to our copies. And one of the things we can do, we can either choose this and make three copies and we'll set it and it'll just put them at, in, in uh, default areas of where we, of where the, uh, where it's randomly selected through the software. But I want to undo that and let's go back and I want to set these up, especially when I'm building parts small parts and I want a repetitive parts, I want them set up exactly the same way. So if I do that, let's go in here and do a linear pattern. We'll choose my part and let's see if we can do three uh, parts by two parts, by two rows. See, we get six parts and where you see the blue dot is gonna be kind of a centroid for that part. So let's spread these out a little bit to where um, we fill up the platform and we have uh, good spacing between our parts. So we'll set these at 30 millimeters in Y and let's go back to Z and maybe what that'll do, we can even go a little bit more in that. We'll go 35 in Z and you can see it's moved our grid out. And if we go in and set, now we've got a set of our parts. One thing uh, to also note um, is if I click, if I go mouse over one of these, it chooses all the parts. This means that these parts have been set up as a group. So if I go to save this, it's gonna save this as six different parts, not one individual parts. And you'll see the six, uh, six parts here. So what if I wanna manipulate and maybe move one of these around, uh, maybe I wanna run a test and try a different orientation. Then what I can do is go back up to combine and separate. And if I want to separate these to where I can have six individual parts, and let's just go in and separate that way, we'll close. And you can see now that I have different parts and I've separated this part out. So if I have that particular part and I want to go in and uh, let's just rotate this, uh, we'll go 100. And, oh, I went in the and move. Let's go and rotate around Z and let's just turn that the other way. And if I wanted to run a test and say, well, if I print one the other way, do I get a different result? Do I get any kind of a, a better flow of material or is there anything that happens differently in that part? Whenever you're doing things to set up different kind of uh, 
print styles. Uh, this is one quick way you can do is go in and set up your parts and just create a test in one build rather than build it six times. Other things we can do, I'm going to delete these guys. You can mirror the part, and I can mirror that based on a on a different plane, and we'll just do that in X, Y, uh, and it gives me two parts, and I can move those around. Uh, you can do other things when you split the part. If I want to go in and just print, let's look at the front area of this. If I want to go in and, I wor and I'm worried about how do the supports work on this bottom edge, well, let me just look at the front of this. And one way to accelerate your learning for a part, let's go in and split that. I'm going to click these connectors off because I don't need the connectors in there. Now I've just got the bottom section of that part. If I want fast iteration and learn the most about my part and how I set it up to, for printing based on my part in Tenor application, this is a good way to do it is find the features that I'm most concerned with and let's go in and um, and do some things with this edge. I can make copies of this edge and rotate it in different orientations and build them all in one build. And this particular material we've got chosen is tough gray 10. So in about 20 minutes, I can run a multiple multitude of tests uh, in one print to see what my optimal support orientation is on this part. So let's bring our larger part out and let's go look at some of the supports and support options. And before I move on, I just want to point out all of these um, different options that you have here, again, have their own help that you can go and find out a lot of the information we just went through, or you can go to the main help and get some of the same things as well. So I'm going to discard here. And actually, let's go back and bring in our 3D print file. And so we'll use the open for the 3D print file. And this has our part here. Now it's still up. If I go look, it's still sitting at 5.19. So I want to fix that. Let's make that three. I may not have hit the enter button. Now that I saw the part move and I see them at three millimeters here, now I know where I want to be in terms of the height or the Z height. In some instances, I may want that higher, but this is kind of the default that seems to get the best uh, supports versus speed for starting parts out. So we're going to turn on our smart supports. When you go into smart supports, there's a couple of things here. Uh, the first one I'm going to point out, I mentioned on uh, module three, it says must watch best practices. If you see that, please do click on that. It will take you to some videos. Uh, there's some extra training here for videos. There's also uh, um, application uh, for the videos for the jewelry. So you'll see there's STLs for the jewelry. And then there's best practices and there's different orientations for the supports for different kind of shapes. Most of these are, are fairly short and, uh, and there's a lot of good information in here if you go through there and look at how you set parts up. The other thing I want to show you here is there's three different types of supports in this particular material. Now I want to move this over here so that you can see down on the bottom right the information. We're using Tough Gray 10. Tough Gray 10 has a general flat tip, a fine flat tip, and a general round tip supports. General flat tip is what I would go to um, for most general parts set up to start off, depends on how many supports. Fine flat tip works very well as for setting up your part, but the thing to consider with fine flat tip, and we'll look at both of these, is you're going to get more supports. And then the general round tip, I usually hold those for if I end up and I have to have a large cross-sectional area and I need more robust supports, that's generally what I will go to for this material. Now. There may be some materials that only have one of these three options, uh, and that's because that was optimal for more cases than perhaps there was available uh, for this case, because this is a more general use uh, material, then there's a lot of different organic shapes that can go in here, and we wanted to be sure that the user had the tools for different kind of supports to be able to use that and work on that part. 
So let's create the supports for this part. And if we go in and look, we've got supports around here. Uh, seems to be pretty good, but I would really like to support this section as well. Uh, based because I want this to be flat and this is going to be more of a datum surface and so I want this to be pretty flat. So let's go to the modify section. When I look at the modify section, I've got supports that can be um, that don't go all the way around my edge. A lot of times if I have a sharp edge and want to preserve that, I'll go ahead and add the supports into that. But before I make a decision on this, let me go back and see what my fine flat tip supports do. Let's go back here and let's pick our fine flat tip. Do you want to regenerate anchor points? Yes. You can see there's a lot more support going on here. Uh, it's a much more dense area, but let's go back and look at the modify. It still didn't give us, you know, we got a lot more supports in areas that we probably didn't really need those because it, remember, uh, they're not yellow and they're not red. so. It's using a different algorithm for a larger cover part where that's where the um, that's where your fine tips are mostly useful. So let's go back to the general flat tip. We will regenerate. And we'll go back to modify. And you see we've kind of just kept the edges to preserve the edges. Um, so let's kind of walk through this and look at some things and, and let's fix this. I have uh, optimized this and chose this shape just to show you some different things to consider when you're setting your part up. So we have an area here that we want to preserve this shape and be sure we're square. So one of the things I'm going to do is go in and add these. And what I'll do is add them at about the same interval that I see uh, going up the other sharp edges. And let's add these back up here to the top as well. One nice thing about these support tips is they're very small and they clean up very well. So you, we're usually pretty liberal in how many supports we'll add to a part. And I'm going to go ahead and preserve this bottom edge all the way around because they are small and they do clean up really well. And we'll see that area covered pretty well. Since this is a larger area, I want to go ahead because you've got a hydrostatic pressure when you're pushing a part down into a liquid. It's similar to if you push a, a beach ball into a swimming pool, you're going to feel that push out and want to move. And so to try to prevent that motion, I'm going to go ahead and add a few random, semi random parts. I guess I'll do these in a little bit of a pattern. And again, we can add a few more supports because they're much smaller. Um, they clean up really well. And to add a few supports to get a better part out um, right away is, is a pretty, uh, pretty low price to pay. So now that we've got really good bottom coverage, the other thing I want to do is go in and look at the holes. And I probably don't need that many in the hole. Um, so we'll take a look and be sure nothing's in the hole. It looks pretty good. That needs to be pretty clean. I think we're okay there. Uh, let's look at the other hole. Uh, there's an extra one there. There's no need for that. And uh, we'll put one over here. Now I could have taken and just moved that part. You can click in, in the left mouse button and drag a, a support over to where you think it should be. but. And this keeps the, the supports out of the hole because I want that to be a through hole as we're mounting that. So let's go back and look also at the points on the sensor. Now, we said this is something that really has to be uh, clean. And so one of the things I have to consider is, am I in a self-supporting position, meaning am I at a better than a 45 degree angle? And we really are right here because you don't see uh, a lot of the color. You see a slight piece of color on the corner right there. So what I'm going to do on this one is I'm going to delete these out of this hole because I've got sensor parts that need to fit in there and these need to be round and I'm pretty confident they're going to be round. Um, the only thing that's really going to be a, a case to help this overhang is right here. 
if I'm ever unsure in a circle on whether or not it's going to print well, I will add one support right at the edge at 12 o'clock, depending on the hole size. If that hole were about five millimeters wider, sometimes I'll add them out here to the edges. I'll leave the holes there, but just to show where we are at 12 o'clock. But in general, I would probably remove these as I printed this part. And then I'm going to go back and look at where I have the supports on this edge. And I need something to go through this edge. So let's take a look and see that I've got it preserved to be round. And I think we're pretty good here. Uh, these are going to be right up on the edge. I can move these up a little bit. Um, but these are going to clean up pretty well. I should be able to handle that uh, quite well and get the part in that I'm looking to mate into that. And we'll look at that on the other side. There's probably a few extra holes here. You can click on the box. I'll get rid of some of the extra holes there. I think we're okay. Um, I think that's going to be sufficient for what we need to do on this on this part. And so let's update the supports. And then let's go look at the tools we have to handle the supports and the geometry of the support within the part. So one of the things I want to do is I want to go back over to our view and let's click on transparent. Now if I look in this area here, you can see where the support goes to the part and whether or not it goes to into the part. Let me get a little bit better position that may show that a little bit better. Here we go. So if you come along the edge, you can see the support going into the part and how far that goes into the part. And so let's look at our options or what we can do with those support tips. One of those with the tip is I can determine how far that goes into part, into the part. And so I've got my penetration length here set at 0 0.5 millimeters. We're going to make that two just so you can see how much further that goes in. And you can see that this changed quite a bit. And I'm going to turn that back to 0 0.5. And you can see it drops back down. 0 0.5, there's the defaults were set on the support tips. And you can think of the support defaults as a general purpose support. So it is likely that when you choose the application of your part or support, you may want that penetration depth to go deeper. You may want to go more shallow. It depends on the user. Look at that from the view of what's my part intent, because you may want to change it. So the goal here is to show you the tools you have to be able to make those kind of decisions and give you some tools to understand on how you could optimize on what your supports end up being. One of the other things that um, I'm going to back out a little bit here. and show you a little bit more on the support tips. And you can see the support tips and the thickness of the support tip and the area, I apologize that the screen's jumping back and forth, that the, the area leading up, the angled portion leading up to the support right here can be manipulated as well. So one of the things let's look at, if I only want to change the tip and where that goes into my support, the tip section is where I'm going to work. And so there's a couple of places to go. And one is going to be the pillar top ratio itself. And the pillar top ratio is set at 0 0.3. Let's make that really small. Uh, I'm going to update the supports. This is the thickness of your tip. And that got slightly smaller. You probably see it more in this area down here than you do on the one on my left. So let's make that bigger. And we'll go to 0 0.6. And you can see it got quite a bit large. To the right of my mouse, you can see that that rectangular section got really wide. And the part on the left only slightly. But of course, this is a flat tip. So it's actually going into the page. So I don't want to uh, discount. So you can really maybe get a better idea to the right of the mouse here. I'm going to go back to 0 0.3 as the default. 
and you can see to the right of my mouse that it's come back down where it's uh, the ratio has made that. It does not mean that a 0.3 millimeters, it's a ratio relative to other parts of the tip and the support. And so one other place I want to show you is that angled section that leads up to the tip right here. And right now that's called your pillar top height and that's set it's one. So let's make that two. Let's just double that. And what you're going to see is the angled section is going to get much longer. And so when you want to get into a place where, hey, I want to, I've got a lot of fine features or I've got a lot of curved surfaces and I want to be sure I can get around that, um, then I can make my support uh, pillar top height longer. And you can see now that we've gotten much longer in our angle and we've got much longer in the actual, the ratio made that longer as well on the end. So you can see it, that made you a much thinner tip at the top. Now, I will warn you that if you go too thin, then you're getting into reliability issues. And the current settings are set up to kind of balance, again, for general use parts, the, um, it's set up to balance the reliability versus the part quality and post-processing that you have to do. And so I'm going to take that back to one one more time. And again, um, one thing that I will say is when you go to your help button here, all of the information that I'm going through is available on the helpline. So all you have to do is go in and click on the help button to find out what these nodes are and all the information that we're discussing. The next place I'm going to go is down here to the pillar. And there's a term here called chunk pillar width. And uh, one of the things that I will tell you is if you think of the tip, that's your minor adjustment for your supports. The chunk pillar width is your major adjustment. And it's going to make everything thicker, not just the tip. It's going to make the entire part thicker. It's set at 0 0.4 now. Let's just put it at like 0 0.65 so you can really see a difference. And I want you to look in this area here as how thick this section gets as well as your support tip. So let's update the supports there. And you can see it made those quite a bit chunkier. In fact, we probably went too far because you see there's almost no angle at the top of our part again. So let's go smaller than 0.4. Let's go to 0 0.25 and see it adjust it the other way. It just made everything thinner. My tip's thinner, my angle's thinner, my braces at the bottom are going to be thinner. So again, that chunk pillar width is going to represent um, the major section. So it's going to change your column, it's going to change your tip, it's going to change your angle. It's going to change all of those because they're based on a ratio that reads back into this chunk pillar width. <coughs> One other place that we'll look at Let's turn the transparent off and we'll do a top view and move this back over. As you can see where you, your, your supports stick out a little bit, if you go to your truss and choose your longest truss, right now it's balanced out at about 10. For some parts, you may not be able to have the supports out here at the edge or want those. So you can set that. Seven's probably the next number I usually go to. And you'll see those tucked back up under. And you can see where those end up. One other place we'll see is the truss interval. And so if you look at where your cross braces in the horizontal are, these are your truss interval. These are set at three millimeters apart now. You can make those more dense. So if you make your supports much smaller or thinner, you're going to probably want to have more trusses to help balance those out so they'll build all the way. I set that to one millimeter and they're set out. Um, you can see the difference here and where that ladder gets quite small. And I'll go back to three where you can see that again. And again, three has been the default, but again, based on the part intent or your application, you may want to make that a little bit different. Now that I've gone through and made all these changes in the supports, and let's go ahead and set this at one where it's more recognizable. I want to save that. And so you can see it's added an asterisk to the top of general flat tip. Well, let's just go in here and go save as, and we'll call it general flat tip uh, sample, and we'll set that. 
And if you go click on your menu here, you'll see that now there's a general flat tip sample. We've saved that. I can rename it. I can also export that. And we'll put that in the sample style and we'll just save that there. And if I want to use that in a different material, if I want to send that to a friend that's working uh, and say, hey, here's a support style I created. It works really good for our application. You may want to try this. This is a good way to share your support styles with one another or to preserve a style that you've made that you want to be sure you've got a record of that you've always got that support style. Another thing that happens with the support styles is you can save this as a 3D print file. So let's go in here and do a save as. And we'll call this support style and orientation. And that'll save again as a 3D print file. So what that does is that saves your support setup. It'll save my anchor points. It'll save our um, uh, any of our build style settings, which we'll look at again. And it'll save all those little places we just tweaked. And, and let's do look at one thing here. If we go back into our support style at our modify, you can see where we've added all of our anchor points. They're all still there. So let's close this. And I'm going to reopen it, and we'll get that support style with the orientation. Well, let's say I built this part and said, you know, I might have I might have liked the round tip better, or I might have gotten a support style from somebody else. But I really like where I went through and set up my anchor points. You can preserve those anchor points, and this is a really good tip to remember because this keeps you from redoing work. So anytime. I set up a part for an orientation and I go through the work of uh, setting all those anchor points and I set that style, I always save a 3D print file. And it is smaller than your uh, PXL file that's generated. So you don't save up a huge amount of place, space on your or hard drive on your PC. But what I want to do is let's go back to the smart support and I want to do uh, a round tip, for instance. Well, before hitting update supports, I click on round tip to start and I go to modify. And I say, okay, I see that. Let's update supports. It's going to update my supports with a round tip because I chose that first. And let's go back to modif uh, modify point. You can see it still has all of my anchor points. But now I've got the round tip supports, and you can see that from the round, uh, from the different round uh, pillars. And so my round tip support settings. Now, what that did not save was everything I did with the tip, because those are relative to this support style with the general flat tip sample. And if I want to go back there, I can just go back and and give that a look, and there's my style again. So. Great way to save your work, but the tip is to go to generate first, choose the support, um, even if we went to find, find flat tip. Sometimes you will be prompted, most times. Do you want to regenerate anchor points? No, I do not, because I just spent a lot of time setting those anchor points up. So read these carefully before clicking yes. Um, and then we can update those supports as well with the find flat tip anchor point style but it maintain our node or anchor point placement on our part. I hope that's clear and that's one place, you know, we that you can always come back and and, and uh on the info center and look at what the uh module training has for being able to save these 3D print files. But these are great tips to save you some work here. So I want to take this back to my general flat tip sample. That was my favorite. I do not want to regenerate anchor points. And we'll update supports. And now I'm going to go to the build style. So before slicing my part, I've got a build style. And I can look at this um, in a couple of ways. So there's a default setup, as we mentioned in module three, that uh, uh, it will default to a standard premium or draft. Generally, it will default to standard. And so I'm still at standard mode, but you know, 
I want to do some things differently on this. So let's go to the Advanced tab and see what's in there. The Advanced tab has, I can look at a region, and I've got base layer settings. But for my region, if I go in, I've got some different things I can do with the motion controls. I can look at my pause times within my motion controls. Um, I can look at the cure depth. This is a way to change your exposure, by the way. If you want to change the exposure to a part and have a, a, a deeper exposure, then you would go up on your cure depth. Generally, I would change this by 10 to 20 microns uh, based on the material. Z compensation is also included uh, in the region section. Then if you go to the global section, this is where your XY offsets and your scale factors come into play. So you can change those in this area here. Uh, you can also change your border thickness. If you want to see that you've got a little harder uh, border on thin wall parts, you may make your border thickness uh, larger. Uh, and you also have your support cure depths, and these are under global parameters in this section. Um, these, again, if you go up and click on the help, Explanations of these are available at this help section on the, in the, on the web. Another thing to do here, I'm going to um, go in. Once we've set this, you can change this. You can do a lot of different things. Your base layer, let me point out that. Your base layer, this is your adhesion settings. Let's say, for instance, something your plate's got um, scratched or bent or you're having some kind of odd issue that you're not having good adhesion to your plate. The first place to go is down here at this base layer curing time and change this by five seconds would be the very first thing I would do if I had an adhesion issue. Or if you're having a really hard time getting it off the plate, you could back off the base layer curing time. Just remember that as you go down, reliability is going to go down with it. So there's going to be a balance with a factor of safety that's set as the default. Um, that's generally the first place I would go. Sometimes I may add a couple of more base layers, might go to seven, but we don't end up changing these a lot, but if you do get into a pinch and you need to make changes there, you can do that in this area. I want to go back to the region section, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove these supports, and we're going to use our orientation button and set this flat. So I'm going to go manual, I'm going to choose my base, and we'll set that, and we'll go ahead and auto place this because it's red, it looks like it set me too low, it doesn't like my size, although I know it will fit in there, so let's manually fit this in there, and we're blue on the outside, as you can see. And so... For it, let's say that I get into a position where I just have to print in this orientation. It wasn't my chosen orientation, and I know I've got this cross-sectional area issue. So let me go back over here. We'll turn our sharp edge on. And I know I've got this section. Again, not preferred. I would always try to change this first. Um, but I do want to give you an option if something comes up and you, and you can't do that. Um, the best print quality you're going to get from this is in your build style. Go to the premium mode. And we talked about larger cross-sectional areas for the premium mode. And one thing you'll notice here, uh, the premium mode is going to have longer times. Uh, I would set for tough gray 10. The, if I've got a large cross-sectional area, I'll set my interval line to one. I will make all of my times longer. And basically what we're doing is we're going to give this um, material time to flow back into the part. We're going to give it time to do some things to, to go in and refresh my material um, by giving it a, a better chance because we know we've got that large cross-sectional area. So let's take our interval pause time and that's what when your interval and in your in your part goes up, let's just make that a uh, one and a half seconds. Uh, my interval downtime is how fast it comes down and we talked about the beach ball and the swimming pool effect a while ago. Let's make that a little bit longer. Um, I'm going to make that like three and a half seconds. But then I'm going to take my interval distance. I'm going to push that up to eight because it lets me for that large cross-sectional area that we've got right here, it's going to let me, uh, it's going to give me pause so that we can go in and, and 
take a, a slow look at this. Another thing we can do here is we can add a region. And let's look at this from the front. Maybe I don't want to build the whole part like that. I only want to build this section here. So let's add a region. And so my first region is going to be up to this bar here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it to the bottom of my part. I don't need my supports to build really that slow. Uh, I know my minimum support height is three, so let's just go set this to, we'll set it to 2.9 just to be sure. And that sets me right below my large cross-sectional area. And then for my second part of that, I'm going to take this top and bring it down just to the top of that. I'll leave my interval line the same number because generally that still keeps you a, a nice looking sidewall. So we've got this eight interval distance for, um, we set it up for one. Now when I did create that region, it just duplicated what I had for region one. So for region two, region one, we made our interval distance eight. We made our interval line one. We made these times longer. Let's go back for interval two and take it back to the values that we had in there. And this was two. And what that allows me to do is if I, if you watch these numbers right here, if you look at region one, they're going to get printed. Um, it's going to get printed one way. Print two, and actually let me back that up. I, I, let me back that up. Region one is beforehand, so we're going to keep this down at five. I apologize, I told you that uh, a different. Region two is the section we want to call out here. And so we're going to add a region three that'll be at the top, but we'll come back to that. Region two is where we wanted to be our thick section, right? So let's make that interval distance eight, our interval downtime 3.5, our pause 1.5, and our interval line one. And then our interval line three is going to be everything above our part there. And let me go back through that since I swapped that up on you. So you've got your base layer, which is your adhesion. Region one is the support region before the part. We know it goes up to 2.9 millimeters. Our men support height is three. So we know that goes up just below our part. Region two is just this thick section of our part. And so we made region two to have a lot more conservative numbers for our interval distance and our times to really slow it down. And we moved our interval line to one. And then region three is everything from here up. And we'll print that the way that we normally print, which you can see it's got the same settings we have by default. And so now that I've got those, I can apply these. And it will save those as premium one. One thing I want to do though, it's not saved permanently. So let's be sure at my premium one, let's just save these. And we can also export this. So if I come up with a style for this type part, I can export this and send it to a friend as well. And let's just do that. And this will say export. It tells me what I have that set up was premium one. And I can save that. And it exported successfully and I can send that to a friend. So. Again, this is the advanced section, and this is why we put this in the intermediate advanced. There's a lot of knobs and some things you can do there. Generally, this is done based on intent and part application. When I have really large cross-sectional areas, I'll go to premium mode. I will normally not try to print a large cross-sectional area, but if I get in a situation where we have to, here's a tool that will make you have a little bit better success. And then once I've created my file, and we'll just go put some supports on there. And we'll save that and then print the file and we'll save that. Um, cover part two and we'll save our part. And we're done. And again, I will save that as a 3D print file. And that was a, a cover sample, but we're going to call this in the cover sample flat. So now if I want to go back and look at the other one I, that we worked with earlier, 
that has the optimal orientation and supports, we will be here. There's a style, of, that one didn't have the support, so we'll just go get the one that we saved the supports on. I know that's a lot of information. Um, again, there's a lot of help in here. These uh, module videos will be available to everyone, but there's a lot of good ways there. Once you know your part application intent, if you need some extra tools from the default and have some intermediate setups, uh, I hope this gives you the things that you need to be able to do that to be successful.